I'm Courtney Fingar, editor of FDI Magazine. I'm here in Tokyo for the 2012 annual meetings of the International Monetary Fund and World Bank. Finance ministers and other officials from around the world have gathered here to discuss the hot topics in the global economy. We've been speaking to a few of them about FDI and other trends. You can watch the footage here on FDIintelligence.com. You can also read our full coverage in the printed version of the magazine as well as here on our website. Enjoy. Thank you for joining us here today. Um, my question, I guess, to start off is, what do you feel are the most pressing issues that should be discussed at these IMF World Bank meetings, and what role can Mexico play in these discussions? Well, this is uh, the fourth or fifth uh, year since the crisis started, and somehow we have not been able collectively to uh, sort of uh, regain uh, confidence uh, in, in, in market uh, dynamics because of all the difficulties of processing the different actions, especially in uh, in Europe. Uh, the environment, e even though we've had a good run for a few weeks in the markets, after the announcement uh, announcements both by the ECB and the Fed uh, in the case of the U.S., a lot of uncertainty remains in the uh, environment. It, uh, we have yet to see how is it that OMT is going to be or not activated by some uh, countries in Europe and also in the U.S. side, the fiscal uh, cliff discussion after the election is capturing the attention of many market participants. All this is uh, taking place at a time in which growth in emerging markets uh, is decreasing. You know, the World Economic Outlook, just published by the IMF, points to an overall reduction in economic uh, activity. So economic stabilization and how to uh, restart uh, economic growth and employment generation dynamics will certainly be the topics uh, of uh, discussion during uh, the next few days here. And what about Mexico in particular? You mentioned the kind of uh, slow growth in emerging markets, and obviously you'll be heavily impacted by any kind of global economic problems. Well, What's your outlook? Yeah, unfortunately, uh, this uh, environment in which uh, there's a lack of confidence, there's uh, uncertainty in the environment, is not the most uh, favorable uh, environment for economic activity uh, around the, the world. The case of Mexico, um, we've uh, been observing uh, growth uh, rates at around p uh, potential uh, GDP growth in, in Mexico, 3.5 uh, to 4 percent. That's what we're expecting for this year. The IMF is projecting 3.8 percent and 3.5 percent next year without any uh, sort of relevant imbalances. Um, our current account deficit is uh, well behaved. Inflation is also in order, our local banks are in a relatively strong uh, strong position. So Mexican, the Mexican economy is somewhat uh, doing uh, well, uh, but it could do uh, better uh, if the international environment was a much uh, more favorable one. Uh, the spillovers that have taken place uh, because of the European situation and in the, the U.S. Uh, call us for, uh, say, uh, additional action or implementing sort of the agreed upon policy actions that have taken place around the G20 uh, process. That's what Mexico has been trying to do as chair of the G20 to facilitate uh, the, the dialogue, to provoke the discussion, to channel uh, the group towards specific agreements uh, such as the ones that we got in Los Cabos with the Los Cabos action uh, plan. But there's uh, a lot of implementing yet to do in the macro fund, certainly fiscal consolidation that is friendly with uh, economic uh, activity on the financial regulation side, uh, same thing. And in particular also the implementation and um, sort of to show the markets that the firewalls that have been strengthened throughout the G20 process this year are actually effective. They're actionable, and because of that, they're relevant for market uh, dynamics and ultimately useful to regain confidence in the marketplace. How do you see Mexico's attractiveness for foreign direct investment? Is it evolving at all, and are you changing the way that you pitch the country for investment? Well, when you think about a potential investment destinations around the world, what we've seen is a clear segmentation of risk-free assets that are yielding 0% um, pretty much. And then you have 
uh, different assets that have become very risky and because of that not necessarily very attractive uh, for different investors. There are not m many places around the world that uh, can give you a solid and stable base of macroeconomic environment and at the same time can offer relatively attractive returns. We think that Mexico is somewhat positioned in that uh, segment uh, because we are a very open economy no? in terms of trade and in terms of also the capital account. Capital can flow in and out of the country uh, in a relatively uh, relatively efficient uh, way. Uh, Mexico, because of that, has uh, gained a lot of attention from um, international uh, investors, international participants. We've seen that after the crisis, FDI is coming back to sort of more uh, normal levels of uh, around 20 uh, billion uh, per year. But also in terms of portfolio flows into Mexico, they're running at record uh, levels uh, for uh, the third year in a row. We're going to have historical high uh, foreign investment in general. When you add uh, FDI plus portfolio investment, uh, Mexico's been receiving around 40, 45 billion dollars per year, and uh, we're running um, at a pace this year to actually uh, uh, get something even higher than that. So what we've been trying to do and use sort of the visibility of the G20 uh, chairmanship this year is uh, basically to put uh, uh, Mexico in front of the world and show that it is a good place to do business uh, in with a solid macro environment, but also growth uh, prospects for the future. Great. Thank you very much and good luck. Thank you. Very much.